hit another day of recording. We are just about one month out from my Highland game, just a little bit over this morning. Uh, by the time I put this out, we'll probably be right at four weeks. Um, I just kind of wanted to do a check-in uh, video. Um, at the beginning of this, I talked about there being a handful of things that I needed to take care of. Uh, sockets, weight, things of that nature, and I just want to kind of check back in on all of that. Get that going. Um, as well today, I've got uh, a short training session because I'm also planning to get out to the field to throw. Probably the only day this week that the weather was going to work. One thing I definitely did not factor in a ton was how much weather was likely to be a factor in throwing a game at this time of year. It is what it is. Um, I can't say that I've lost tons of throwing over it, just more than expected. So today it works, so we need to make sure it happens. Um, like I said, so I've got a workout, hitting the field for Highland game. I also have an ice maker arriving today. So uh, I talked about that a couple videos ago. The plan as it starts to warm up and this water is not gonna be as naturally cold for me. The plan there is to figure out some sort of home ice solution to offset the cost of ice and something that can pay for itself pretty quickly. Uh, this was, actually I got a really good deal on this one. So i um, pretty excited about that one. Again, talk about offsetting the cost of just buying ice. It's gonna go down, it's gonna be pretty easy with this thing, assuming it works as it says it does. So um, let's get it rolling. A couple months ago, did a video and really talked about there is three major things that I've got to get dialed in for this Highland game. And the first one was my prosthetics. And that one, I'm in great shape on right now. Um, those sockets turned out incredible. My fit is as good as it's ever been. And really, I have no complaints when it comes to my device right now. Uh, we'll continue to do maintenance. I will for sure be in one or two more times in the next month before this game, um, especially week of. We're just gonna tighten the screws and just make sure everything is as it should be. Um, but right now, I couldn't be, I couldn't ask for anything more when it comes to my prosthetics. The second piece was gaining weight, and that is going not amazing. Um, right now, I'm having a hard time getting up over, say, 196, 197. And the reality is, is I've definitely had the capacity to be more disciplined with this diet, as well as more aggressive. Um, Honestly, I was really hoping I wasn't going to have to do some like insane amount of food, but really the biggest thing I've learned in this process is that my maintenance calories for performance are much higher than what I was eating. I've been under eating for a while. It's really the biggest thing I've learned. Um, I am now up over 4,000 calories a day, probably going to end up making another jump, but I'm only going to be so aggressive at this point in terms of just simply gaining weight. Um, I don't think it really makes much sense to get too nuts in terms of continuing to just gain weight as I'm getting this close and needing to really get everything dialed in. Um, so while I'm not quite there, it's not off the table, um, but no matter what, I've learned a ton when it comes to my diet and, and to what I need to do, especially like in the future as we get things rolling and I pursue more things. Um, there's, this is not the last thing that's already on the interest list that would suggest getting a little bit heavier or a lot bit heavier would be really conducive to this. Um, there are some big rocks over in Iceland that, that interest me. Um, that they, they interest me in a major way. I'm not saying that that's for sure gonna happen, but um, like I said, it's real interesting. So that's a, you know, like I said, so there's gonna be more opportunities for this. I will figure out how to create a 200 plus version of myself and figure out what is this good for? Um, it's just real neat and interesting. So um, the other thing is throwing. I'm going to get into that a little bit later because I'm going to go throwing later. But right now I'm going to get myself a short little session in. I've begun learning the Olympic lifts on the landmine, which is a very different arena to learn. Snatch, clean and jerk. Um, but for the stuff that I'm doing, I think it's got the best carryover in terms of like direct skill set that it's that it's training and working on translation to to throwing to future endeavors also it's just a really really difficult skill movement um this variation is it's very precise and accurate it fits very well 
into the training I already do with Wolf Brigade. And then the other piece of the puzzle is as an amputee is it goes a really long way towards forcing me to be confident, dynamic, and accurate on my prosthetic. Without that confidence, it's really hard to get into a lot of these activities that people tend to think are maybe not, they don't work for an amputee. No, they're just really hard for an amputee. And the reality is, is that can't be a, a drawback because everything's harder as an amputee. Walking is harder with one foot and a prosthetic than it is with two feet. Um, contrary to what some people want to try to bring to my doorstep, no, there is no advantage to being an amputee. There, there, there isn't. There, it is not better than the original foot, unless the original foot is incredibly damaged like mine was. So um, everything's harder. That's not ever going to be a reason for me to, not, to to or to not do something. It's simply, do I want to do it? Okay, I'm willing to figure it out. Um, that has really been my only limitation since amputation is what am I willing to figure out? So why wouldn't I let this go? So like I said, getting ready to hit some landmine lifts, good little primer, good work. Um, like I said, great primer for throwing here in just a little bit, hit some uh, weight for distance. So let's go. Go, go, tired as I should be like on the session like this I should not be like drenched in sweat heavy hard breathing barely able to get up that is not bode well for my throwing session later um, I think I did one of these and the plan was to finish feeling about like this maybe a little bit more I had some intentional conditioning that day but I remember getting done and just like watching the video back and just laughing like yeah I wasn't supposed to be quite that tired but no so that guy's done um, like I said I've really loved these lifts. Um, when I made the move to start working with Greg Walsh, I found something I didn't realize I was looking for in my training, which was the higher intensity, the high level of execution, but creating an environment where like accuracy of your movement is what's stressed. It's not like the score is a byproduct. Um, something I think the CrossFit did very well, and a lot of people haven't done well with it, unfortunately is simply the scoring of workouts. I think taking an objective measure is extremely important to everything you're going to do. Um, sit there and get, gauge everything on how you perceive yourself to look, and you're gonna find how you feel on things is not very consistent and has a lot to do with a lot of things outside of your control. Um, I like the objective side of things, but I wanted something that challenged me in this way. And that's what I found when I started training uh, in the Wolf Brigade system is that accuracy was always first, accuracy of the movements. And these Olympic lifts on the landmine require a ton of accuracy. I am very new to them. I have probably put, I've definitely put less than 10, I have less than 10 hours of practice on these total. Um, they used to be a lot sloppier. If I've got a decent video of some of my first ones I could toss in here, I'm, I'll do that. Um, I've improved a lot, go figure, practice works. But yeah, so that stuff is, it's been exactly what I was looking for. It's a lot of fun, and it's definitely shown up in my boxing. It's definitely shown up in my throwing, and that's what I'm looking to do. If my training is only helping me do more in the gym, then my training isn't meeting its purpose. Um, I'm trying to enable more experiences, 
and to do more things. And that allows me to help more people um, as I figure out and suss out everything that I've gone through. So uh, getting a little bit of stretching, the left hip has been tight lately. Um, I've made a switch to some barefoot shoes and there's just, I, I don't know, maybe a little bit of a learning curve there, or body getting used to it. It's definitely getting better, but it's something that I, it's just something I need to put a little bit of work in. So here's a little bit of mobility work. I'll have got one more hour to coach after that and then heading home, getting some calories and getting to the field. Work is done for the day. Um, it's just, uh, what do we got? 236. So just a little bit, you know, 230 right now, uh, making some lunch, making that little fried rice dish, fried rice dish that I had shown a little bit ago. I'm going to knock that down, get me some calories, a little bit of digestion on that one. I'm not going to go immediately to the field, but I'm really not going to waste a lot of time. So like I said, I'm going to knock down that, um, a little bit of caffeine, go figure. And a couple of these, uh, alpha brain from on it. These things are fantastic. Um, honestly, I think it's a much better pre-workout for almost any sport skill sort of thing. I'm a huge fan, uh, have been for a while. So that I actually feel much better throwing after taking some alpha brain over a more traditional pre-workout. Um, you know, it's a little bit of caffeine and then that nootropic. I find that my coordination, my dexterity is all much better. And if I'm not, and I don't always take, like, I don't ever take really heavy pre-workouts. Um, I almost always take stem free. Uh, so I don't necessarily need that. Like my body doesn't need that to feel like it's getting up. So that's a really nice dial that I choose to not pull very often or lever, I guess would be the better analogy. And then, but as we get into maybe like the game through the day, if I'm getting tired, I can now kind of pull that lever and it becomes an addition versus like just getting me to baseline. And that's a big difference there. Um, if you always take the pre-workout, you at minimum are going to feel like you need it even if you don't. So like I said, I'm going to knock that down, head to the field, and we're going to get some weight for distance in today. started out really good which is like super duper what I needed on this event definitely like my least favorite event partly because it's my worst event but it's probably more the other way around um, actually the heavyweight for distance got something figured out felt really good relative to heavyweight for distance I hit the mark and then some on what I needed and just it just went super south after that uh, moved to the lightweight timing was just not there at all and a lot of that came down to my my implement broke that was from trying to fix that implement um luckily it's not my throwing hand but i just couldn't get a rhythm going i, I got some new cues to work on or a new cue to work on and so it was starting to click with me and it just got so inconsistent i just i couldn't get the reps in because every other every throw or every other throw i was having to fix it just trying to keep the practice going um just really annoying uh really annoying to have something like that happen it's out of my control but it's not really less frustrating because this is to me this is the gatekeeper event um these throws these are the ones that are going to be in the way of me hitting this eight for eight i feel like if i'm good on these then i'm definitely feeling good on the other ones and so like i said it's a bummer um i mean to be honest like the other you know the heavyweight actually was a big boost to confidence lately. It just I've been kind of feeling some of that imposter syndrome getting a little bit closer to this date. I've never put anything out there like this, such this big of a goal. And, you know, all the little voices start creeping in. The, I've not thrown for my lifetime. You know, I'm not a long-term thrower. I don't have all that history. 
than a lot of the guys that I know and respect in the sport do. And I'm going after a pretty wild goal to rewrite the entire record book in one day. So like you said, those voices have been kind of creeping in a little bit. Came in, got the got my heavyweight moving in a way that I was real happy with. And like I said, just the momentum kind of fell apart. The rhythm of the practice fell apart when the implement broke on like the first or second lightweight throw. And then for better, like, you know, whatever. Like you said, just kind of fell, fell down after that. But it is what it is. I've got a month to get it tightened up. Um, that's, that's the good part. I don't not have time. The game isn't tomorrow or next week and uh yeah i get it figured out so it is what it is um but we're gonna head home ice maker got delivered just a little bit ago so we're gonna take that apart or open it up and figure out what's going on there get that rolling and uh that'll be that so real fun um going through all my stuff um after filming everything the video of the ice maker had did not save any of the audio. It just saved the video. So um, to be honest, there wasn't anything special. I'm gonna get, I'll break it down here uh, probably in the next one. That being said, just got started using it the other day or yesterday. And um, I'm pretty confident this is going to be a pretty good solution. So I'm pretty excited about that. So that really wraps up the video. Um, the throwing's getting going. Uh, I'll, I'll improve on the next session and on the next session. And I'm, I feel good about where I'm at. Um, like I said, the imposter syndrome stuff is just stuff. Um, uh, you know, it's just a matter of identifying it, dealing with it and moving forward. And then from there guys, um, that's the video. Like subscribe, but you know, all the things um, that help me grow this channel, lets me do more cool things and tell more stories. That's really what I'm trying to get at. Uh, I've got some stuff coming now in a couple of weeks that I'm really, really excited to share. And um, as always, thank you very much.